If you rewind the clock about a thousand years, this would have been a bustling village with dozens of homes, gardens, farmland, a temple, and hundreds of native Caddo Indians. You may not know it, but we owe quite a bit to the Caddo, including the word Texas. So there's a Caddo greeting that is Texa, which means it's a friendly greeting, it means friend. Um, and when the Spanish came, that became Tejas. Okay. Which in turn there. became Texas. Texas, wow, so we yeah. get our very name from these guys. That's we do. amazing. Yep. This is Rachel Galan, who helps visitors understand the incredibly intricate history of the Caddo people. So what a lot of people don't realize is that the Caddo people who lived here, this was a really complex, developed society uh -huh. for decades. Um, so a large ceremonial center, they had their own religion mm -hmm. structure, they had their own political structure, they were renowned traders, they traded salt and bow blanks and pottery far and wide. The Caddo Nation stretched from East Texas all the way up to Missouri. And unlike the Comanche or Apache, who were nomadic, the Caddo stayed put and built incredible communities anchored around permanent mounds of dirt, the focal point of this historic site. There are three earthen mounds here. In the distance back there is the High Temple Mound, the ceremonial mound. So that would have been the religious heart of the community. This low platform mound, it was built about the last hundred years of this occupation. We talk about it as like a stage for important events. This is our burial mound. So archaeologists believe that there are about 90 people that were buried in this mound, all the political and the religious elite. And is that how the mound got taller? Right, so these were layer built one, up over, two, yeah, like a cake. over generations. And they were buried with what they needed for a journey. So they believed in a six-day journey to the afterlife. They believed that after you died, your spirit, you became stars in the sky. Um, so they were buried with weapons and pottery and things that they needed to make that journey. To make a six-day journey. I feel like I'm sort of standing in front of one of the pyramids of Egypt, right? Right. The Texas version, at least. It does take some imagination to see a thriving community out here on this prairie. But luckily, they've built a home that can truly take us back. And we built it with the Caddo people. So this is the only grass house on Caddo land that the Caddo helped build. Oh, that's amazing. Houses like this and land were actually owned by the women in Caddo culture, who would have shared the home with the wife's family. So not only did the Caddo men own virtually nothing of value, they also had to sleep next to their mother-in-laws. Oh. There you go. Oh, yeah. You know, I've, I've slept in much worse. Right? You've done such a good job kind of recreating the moment. This is a really special space. Yeah. And one of the big challenges that we have is how to really build and strengthen those connections with the living Caddo people. Yeah. And how to bring this into current times for visitors and how to give them something authentic. Amazing. I'd say they're doing an amazing job. For Texas, well, it doesn't get much more authentic than this. If you liked this video, chances are you're gonna love another video that's somewhere right about here. Or you can visit thedaytripper.com. But above all, what I want you to do most, remember the Alamo. I'll see all y'all out on the road. Bye con Dios, amigos.